Hey, friends. Before the MCU, there was the OG MCU. <laughs> that was a real thing, and no doubt, most of you know about the incredible Hulk TV series starring Bill Bixby and Lou Ferrigno. But there were other less successful attempts at bringing Marvel superheroes to the small screen. And we're looking at one of those now. That's right. This time we're talking about Doctor Strange, a TV pilot from 1978. Now, Michael, one of my viewers, was kind enough to send me this off of my wish list. Thanks, man. I'd never seen it before and was intrigued. I liked the first Doctor Strange movie with Benedict Cumberbatch, so I was curious about this movie when Michael mentioned it to me. Well, I, I'd never, never heard of it. And oh gee, Doctor Strange? Well, turns out it's a real thing. So let's get into it. Our story goes like this. There's this here demon dude who wants to destroy goodness. So he gets a sexy chick, Morgan Le Fay, to do the dirty work. In order to win over goodness, this chick has to destroy the guardian of goodness, one Lindor, a powerful sorcerer. But Lindor is getting old and needs to find a replacement before his time is up. Well, Le Fay first attempts to kill him off using this here cute chick as a cat's paw, but it doesn't work since Lindor is so powerful. The cute chick gets a case of scrambled brain, though, so she winds up at the local hospital. In the emergency room, there's a psychiatric ward, and the doctor on call is our hero, Dr. Stephen Strange. Now, he doesn't know it, but he's the heir to fantastic mystic powers. He's a good guy trying to help his patients, even though the head of the unit doesn't like him. Yeah, you know, this guy probably voted for Nixon twice. Anyway, he eventually uh, meets Lindor and helps the chick. Lindor tells him about the mystic powers, but Doc Strange is not too sure about it. Well, one thing leads to another, and Morgan Le Fay tries to tempt Doctor Strange to the dark side. Pretty tempting if you ask me. Will Doc Strange hang with the forces of goodness or badness? Will the evil one rule the world? And will Doctor Strange ever show up to a staff meeting on time for once? This is an introduction to Doctor Strange as he learns about his powers. So, well, most of the time Strange is wearing regular apparel or a doctor's coat, we do get to see Strange in something resembling his famous costume towards the end of the movie. So, so that was cool. In our cast, Peter Hooten plays Doctor Strange. We last saw him in Orca, the killer whale movie. <laughs> you know, I liked this guy. He works as Stephen Strange, and I could see him pulling this off in a weekly series. We also have the legendary actor John Mills as Lindor, Strange's mentor. He's always great, and he's good here, too. Love interest Clea is played by Eddie Benton, who was a regular on the series Sledgehammer. Remember that one? <laughs> Jessica Walters is the evil Morgan Le Fay. She worked in TV for a long time. You may recognize her from Archer or Arrested Development. She also voiced Fran on Dinosaur. And then there's this guy, Wong, the major domo who works for Lindor. He was played by longtime character actor Clyde Kusatu. He's been in a metric ton of stuff, including the original version of Midway, Airport 75, Meteor, Super Train, and a whole ton of classic TV shows. He's still working, too. <laughs> Michael and Sarah Kang from the original Star Trek, he lends his voice to the universal force of goodness called the Ancient One, who we hear when Strange gains his powers. We also hear the voice of Ted Cassidy as the voice of one of the demon dude minions. He was Lurch, of course, from the Addams Family, and Rock from another classic Trek episode, What Are Little Girls Made Of? I, I don't know what... 
what Captain Kirk is planning to do to Rock there. Uh, what, what do you think he's he's going to do? What, 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 what's Kirk going to do to Rock there? But, 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 but anyway, <laughs> anyway, moving on. <laughs> Stan Lee worked closely with the production and said he felt it was a very good attempt at making a Doctor Strange show. But I can also see why this one never took off and went to series. The effects are the main problem in that regard. The energy beams and whatnot all look pretty cool, although by today's standards they're kind of simple, but it would have been prohibitively expensive to do on a weekly series back in the day. That's because effects like this all had to be animated by hand, and that cost money. And of course the Doctor Strange movie from 2016 looks amazing because the CGI brings the mystic world to life in a way this movie never could. This version of course looks, well, kind of cheap compared to the modern CGI in today's movies. To do it right would have meant more animated effects and fancy sets, which a skimpy TV budget generally doesn't allow for. But I like this one. It's a fascinating look at what might have been. The Incredible Hulk and The Amazing Spider-Man were both in production in 1977, and Captain America was in a TV movie in 1979. With this pilot being made in 1978, this was the OG MCU. Wouldn't it have been cool to have Doctor Strange meet up with Bill Bixby's David Banner? Or to bring in Nicholas Hammond as Spider-Man? It could have happened. If only some of these shows were more successful or had even come to fruition. Sadly, only the Incredible Hulk lasted any length of time. Ah, what might have been. Taking into account the limitations of the budget and the time in which it was made, and this is a TV pilot movie after all, I enjoyed this and it was fun. I'm giving this one two and a half paws. Definitely worth a watch to see the OG MCU. You take care of yourselves and I'll see you in the next one.